Boards, games, boards, games, it's what I'm talking about. Boards, games, boards, games, we're not gonna shout. I am starting off this streaming with a little bit of dancing. And I see Catherine over moving and having some tea they are drinking. And we're going to be talking about introversion. This is a makeup of your situation make up of your taste and what makes you tick we're going to talk about this just a bit introversion and board games it's what we're talking about introversion and board games i'm not gonna shout introversion and board games <laughs> brilliant hello Hi. and welcome to everyone watching it is lovely to have you as always and Catherine, thank you so much for joining me. Um, sorry, lost my banners. Um, oops, I should have said, I am Bez. It's his bedtime in New Zealand, and we are bledering about board games. Um, not that either of us live in New Zealand, but, you know, just out of respect to everyone there, I got one confused YouTube comment, and, you know, I explained the situation to them, and just paying respect to our, all, all our global friends. And so coming up today, we are talking about introversion and board games. And why did you, um, you've been on the show before. I can't remember which episode it was, like 100. It was a while ago. It was a few months ago. Like if you go yeah. back, like um, it's exactly the same picture. So it's exactly the same photo of Catherine. And you can scroll down until you see it. I'm sorry. Um, but it was all about your making edible dice and you know, making edible things, that which is kind of really cool. And then we touched into making edible board games, which was really cool. And Tolo Alex, it is lovely to see you. And, um, but for those who haven't seen it, how would you quickly, before we get into the question, play quick questions, how would you quickly in one minute summarize who is Catherine Morgan? Gosh. Um, oh, an introverted maker of edible products for geeks and mostly board gamers, but I think we're going to expand into other sorts of geek. Uh, I'm an all-round geek, really. I, I like all sorts of things, so it's it's hard to really pin pin myself to one one area, but I am, I am a, a geek for all seasons. Okay, I'm sure we'll have some geeky related questionably quick questions later on from the audience. Right. And, um, yeah, you came on i think i invited you on because i was like yeah i want to um did i invite you on the first time i wanted to it chat is. to you yeah and it's like it's been lovely to chat with you and you know you seem like a lovely person even though we'd only chatted very briefly at very that briefly. Um, city of games and it's been lovely kind of getting to know you and other people like during this time of covid even though like you know it's incredibly sad but you know it's like a nice thing kind of just chatting to people yes. and but um we'll get into this whole notion of chatting with people on stream but how why did you agree to come on again and <laughs> this isn't even going to be your last episode like i can reveal that you are scheduled to come on in two weeks for a Absolutely. group chat yeah so why yes, did I you agree wait. to come on um, I, I just find it really, uh, it's quite therapeutic, actually. I think especially at the moment when we have reduced opportunities to talk to people, I actually find it really pleasant to just have the chance to speak to somebody who doesn't live in my house, doesn't even <laughs> live in my town, doesn't live anywhere near me, and actually having a conversation about random stuff. It's great. really like it. And, um, yeah, I like this. I'm just going, not going to... <laughs> so, um, from state says, Guten Morgen, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Guten Morgen. <laughs> and lovely to see you too, Xate. And so, um, let's sh shoot over to the intro before we come back to the main topic. But we will get there 
in about 20-ish minutes, I promise. So let's first of all talk about brilliant things, brilliant things. What's the little thing which is brilliant? <laughs> oh, it is a uh, house plant. House plants mm. are completely brilliant. I, if I could, I would live in a sort of indoor forest. I think that would be absolutely wonderful. It just sort of bringing the outdoors indoors and just sort of wading through plants as you walk through mm -hmm. your house is a, it's a lovely thing. Yeah, really good. I can't remember. Oh yeah, it's actually, um, do you know Duolingo? Yes. And um, so one of the Duolingo stories that I was reading in French because I was learning, um, le improving my French, let's say, <laughs> via Duolingo. And um, yeah, there's this story about like an indoor, someone goes up to the top floor and then the dog is barking and then inside their apartment, they've just got to park inside their apartment. Wow. It's like just all the trees and everything. It's brilliant. It sounds like Jumanji. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I agree. House plants are brilliant. Um, you know, one of my housemates has these wee succulents and um, we have, oh, I wish I'd kind of brought them over now. This would, but uh, I don't know, like, I don't know, then I, I don't really have a good place to put them. But um, yeah, we've got some that have been living certainly since longer than I came here. And we've got some that come and go. They haven't quite survived like a basil plant. I know in theory, you should be able to keep that alive forever, but Hypothetically. that's pretty tricky. Yeah, absolutely. Coriander is my great uh, thing that I try to keep alive because it's so nice when it's fresh, and but it has a tendency to go really leggy, and then then one has to start again. But it's mm. it's just so delicious, which is a very oh, you know those spider plants. Those are really easy to oh, keep. They're great. Like, yeah, they're really good. They, they just keep growing, and then you practice have babies. Plant over water them, and then you just water them, <laughs> and then they keep. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, have you so ever seen those amazing like plants that grow, but they don't? You don't have to plant them anything, anything. So you can just hang them on stuff, and they have no soil. No. So they they're sort of aerobically uh, nutritional. I can't. I'm not very knowledgeable on the subject. I have to say, I just like them. I think they're cool. <laughs> so I think, um, you know, there is so much going on with plants, like the photosynthesis and how they synthesize oh. things into those chemicals and nutrients that they need. It's just amazing. Like there's so much going on and it's like kind of, you know, you're taking care of something and there's that satisfaction, mm. but it's not as high maintenance as, you know, an animal that moves. Like True. cats or whatever. I mean, I'm not cats. against cats, but you know, they are a bit higher maintenance. And I don't think, um, honestly, I wouldn't want to have any sort of pets. And yeah, plants producing oxygen, that is pretty that's brilliant. That's right, they oxygenate the atmosphere. Apparently they help you sleep better if you have a couple of house plants in your room, that actually improves sleep. So that's a nice little oh. tip. <laughs> and you're right, cats are an absolute liability. I've just acquired two cats since, I think since we last spoke possibly or, or around that time. And uh, thematically, one of them has actually eaten one of my house plants. So, so asserting their dominance. Yes, I think I think it was a cry for attention. I, I was actually in the room watching him at the time, and just out of the blue, he just he just ate the house plant before I could stop. Man, mm. <laughs> and yeah, oh, you I had cats, cats last after. time. There we go. On. Not that talked new. about cats and cooking <laughs> challenges, and Boring. I just want to show that it says they would have stayed up in bed after a very late night, but. Because oh. it got up specially because it was you. <laughs> so if it was just me on my own or with anyone else, <laughs> it would have just slept. Insulting. But... <laughs> no, no, I, I can I can understand that. I am here mm. every day. So like at a certain point, it's like, well, I'll see Bez tomorrow. It's all good. But Catherine, we don't see you, Catherine, all the time. Hi. Really good to see you too. <laughs> oh, Yes, Bez, I wouldn't get up for you. I see you multiple times most days, <laughs> says Xate. That's mm -hmm. not that's not actually true. I mean, you see me once most days, I would say. You see me multiple times, like maybe two or three times a week. I feel like she's replaying the video several times. That's just oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, that that is kind of a bit weird. What's going on there? Um so <laughs> let's move on. Let's move mm. on to our 
Recent highlights, recent highlights, living life and seeing the sights. Recent highlights, recent highlights, playing games and other delights. Recent highlights. Yay. So I invite everyone who's watching to chat about some of their recent highlights. Um, would you like to go first or shall I? After you. Okay, let me um, flash up this photo. So um, here Ooh. is a game that I got to play which was Empires of the North, which, do, 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 this is the box, by Ignacy Shevchik and Joanna Kianka. Um, sorry, I'm getting those names wrong. I think they're both Polish. But yeah, here you can see it set up, along with some snacks, and after you'd finish the crisps. Um, and yeah, it's kind of an engine-building game. You're getting these cards. There's a random deck for... Well, there's a deck that you shuffle for each of the six factions. And the more workers you have, the more actions you'll be able to do. You get more cards that you build. And then once you've got the cards, you can do them as actions. And this one card was ridiculously good for me. This one card basically won me the game. So spend one worker and two different resources to gain three victory points. This was mm -hmm. massive. And beside it... What you can't quite see is the mystic land that you can sort of just see going blurry, where the mystic land copies a thing. And then there's some other cards that lets you unexhaust things and then use them again. So it got oh. to the fur, it was like, I think the fourth turn. And I managed to go from like 18 points up to like 34 points, and 25 points is the like game end trigger. And so I basically got half of. It was just like, get some resources, boom, activate this thing, unexhaust it, activate this thing, activate the copy, activate the other copy, unexhaust it, activate the thing. And it was just completely ridiculous. I almost felt like, I felt like I played well in that I used, adv took advantage of the opportunities, but I felt like it was incredibly unfair. I felt almost guilty during this game. Do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you've you've spotted the loophole, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, but it, it it's almost not gets just embarrassing a after a while. It was also that I got that so early, and here is um, Louis, who <laughs> that is not who I was playing against. Those are the <laughs> hands of the other person that I was playing against, <laughs> who was okay. also wearing red. So well done on them. But yes, yes. absolutely. Um, and. Yeah, that is Empires of the North. I will definitely be chatting about that tomorrow. Um, I also played Master Words with Eric Yurko and Ian Zhang, which was quite a delight because I'd never actually played a game with them before, even though I chatted to them. So being able to play a game live on Switch, that was really fun. And if anyone wants to play games at about 4 p.m. on a, um, like, weekday with Ian Zhang, then, I mean 4pm UK time for those who are unaware, then get in touch with Ian Zhang, that's Ian Zhang Designs, and they are a lovely host, and Master Words was a great game, so yeah, get in touch with them, and yeah, um, what else, oh yeah, Cats and Cycling, those were my recent highlights, and just <laughs> to grab the comments from the chat, I am the person that, um, I Skype um, Xate apparently every hour. Okay, now it's hyperbole. <laughs> and um, yes, yeah, so um, highlights Xate digitally met Conrad of Meeple Disney last night. I get why everyone's so hyped about him. He's pretty cool. I do not know this person, but awesome. Nope. Someone to look for? Yep. So any highlights from you, Ka? Yes, well, we um, we had half term from school last week, so I got to uh, I basically got to ignore the children for a week while my <laughs> husband spent the week with them, and I made sweets. Um, <laughs> it was um, it would have been a great opportunity, but unfortunately, it was absolutely probably my busiest week of the year. So, but it was it's been wonderful. I've had my first two months of working full time on my business. I've never you know really had a full time option before so that's been really brilliant um we had my 
uh, my gaming circle round for one last hurrah before the lockdown. Um, we got to play some great new games. Uh, well, not new so much as we probably played them the time before. So we played um, Aeon's End, which is a mm. great favorite. Um, it's very much a, again, it's engine building, but it's a co-op. It plays, I suspect it plays better with two, but it plays really well with four. We've decided not to try it with two. That way we won't know. Um, it's it's a sort of a, a really sort of fantasy setting built around sort of sci-fi fantasy. Um, it's It plays a little bit like Dominion. So you're sort of drafting cards, you're purchasing cards, you're building a deck, you're building an engine um, and, and you have to fight some monsters. And it's, it's, it's a nice, Nice uh, co-op setting for four. Um, and then we've also been playing something called The Crew, which is a kind of a whist variant. Um, so I don't know if anyone's familiar with sort of uh, Trump type heart spades, whist, various names for that sort of uh, card game. Um, and that's Eon's End, not oh, The well Crew. Done. <laughs> well done, yeah, Eon's End, that's the one. Um, yeah, so The, the Crew has been really, really fun. You're, you're basically, again, co-op. Uh, you're trying to sort of win whist style hands but in certain orders and in certain ways with certain conditions makes it nice and challenging so that's that's a nice nice sort of filler game and we also play that at the end of the evening so that's been great we've really enjoyed that that's that's more or less my entire life for the last two months pretty much that and cooking sweets not a lot else <laughs> and this is the polish cover in oh. case anyone really wanted to see that <laughs> and i'm also and this is um the crew but um one d spiel des Jahres. um and uh, we've got a lot of dots from sites i'm not sure what that's about but um talking about conrad he's a guy doing stuff on the internet but talking as if we were Real life friends at the table, not distance or cleaned up for the internet. Okay. And good. there's um, all. Many dots. Yes. I hope you're okay, Derek Seat. Um, and yes, it, Alex says it sounds nice. And let us know if you've got any highlights of your own that you want to share. Um, Oh, I just needed a screenshot with my chat next to your video. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, let's move on to the questionably quick questions. And if you've got any questions for Catherine, Kath, then this is so, yeah, shoot in your questions. Let's start off with the thing that I always ask, where exactly are you and what time is it? I'm in my kitchen and it is, um, it's 8.45 according to this clock because my clock has stopped. Uh, <laughs> I need to fix it. It's on the list. <laughs> but it is actually 10.18 because you're in England, same as me, and in Bristol. Yes, well, I'm, in, I'm halfway between Bristol and Gloucester, um, yeah, out in the countryside, in a lovely little town called Barclay, which is the home of the, very topically, the home of vaccination because uh, Edward Jenner had his house here. So he actually invented the first vaccine for smallpox in this very town. Okay. Um, I just want to acknowledge that, I hope Xate doesn't mind me flashing up. This is a really interesting thing. So Xate has a thing about not talking about people on the internet behind their backs. So if Xate were to um, chat about someone, then you know, getting rid of the other people's Text so that they can say, hey, this is what I said about you. And that's a really well, lovely thing in many ways. Do you have any rules like that, Kav? No, I don't. But I, it's just not something I've ever thought about. I'm quite old and I suppose I've, I've, not, I've grown up with the internet in the sense that it grew as I grew. But I, I didn't have it when I was young. So I suppose when I was forming my morality, I wasn't really in a technological space and so i didn't really think about it in those terms and that's actually a really really good idea um yeah i think mm. that's that's maybe something i should consider doing i don't talk about people very much in all honesty i really don't uh, except in real life you know sort of casual 
your mother said this and you know, <laughs> nothing very exciting. But but in terms of, you know, referencing people online, I, I really don't very often, actually, because I think um, I'm just not interesting enough to do it, you know. <laughs> but it's a really, really good rule of thumb. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you are able to do that, then more power to you. I mean, I, mm. I would certainly like, I would like to be talked about and you know if people want to talk about me then i encourage them to do so hopefully nice things you know if <laughs> and even if it's not so nice things feel free to let me know but you know it's up to you um and yeah at aquasulis alex is talking about having another session with their mentor which i believe is from grace kendall and mike bell souls um, tabletop mentor shop program do you know of this no i don't i haven't i haven't heard of that particular one but that's that's a wonderful thing so have you had any mentors during your years that you can point at absolutely i mean my mentors were probably um probably my first boss um who I, i'm about to talk about on the internet and i'm probably not going to share it with him but there we go uh so my, my first proper boss, um, a lovely guy, used to used to run a little technology company in Exeter. And I think I learned quite a lot about how to run a company from that and, and a lot about business and just a lot about being a person. So that was really great. Um, and I also learned an awful lot from the next company that I worked for about how not to run a company and how not to be a person. <laughs> so the contrast was quite stark. Um, but actually, thematically, I've just started mentoring somebody myself. Um, I, I feel a little, I've got a little bit of imposter syndrome about it because I worry that, you know, perhaps I'm not qualified or, you know, I don't know enough or something. But I think I've, you know, I've probably made enough mistakes in my life and, you know, taken enough wrong turns and right turns that I can probably provide something. So that's actually a really exciting opportunity for me. And that's through a company called Coaching for Geeks, Ooh. which is a sort of another probably a very similar thing I would suspect uh just sort of off offering general by advice Robin Beats. that's right yeah absolutely and that's um you know another wonderful um lifeline I suppose for for people who are of a geeky persuasion and who just who just want some support getting started with a project or or general life and I think it's mm. it's, it's great that perhaps us slightly older and uh, more weathered geeks can pass on some of the <laughs> the wisdom that we've accrued through trial and error <laughs> yeah and Kate, for sure um feel free to keep talking about me and you don't need to feel <laughs> an obligation to tell others i mean you can even say more nice things about me and if you know having to tell me is the difference between you talking about me or you're not talking about me then please just talk about me and don't feel obligated to report back to me if you know what I mean because I mean that's it feels like that could um in a way like I talk about people all the time like a lot of them I've never spoken to I mean I talk about Richard Garfield and Mark Rosewater all, all the time now Mark Rosewater has um responded to one of my messages I mean to be fair they've responded to thousands of people's messages on this thing called blogger talk but one time I sent an almost aggressive message because I was feeling pretty down. I said, hey, Mark, you're pretty... it was like almost aggressively positive, but in a twisted way. I can't remember <laughs> my exact words, but it was something like, hey, Mark, you're pretty awesome. You make you are working on a great game and I'm never going to be you, but I can be great in my own way. What do you say to that? And then Mark said, yes, you can. And that was really nice because I was feeling pretty down. I all I wanted was this kind of affirmation from someone that I saw as a role model, if you know what I mean. And then yeah. just to have them say, yes, you can. Just that quick, you know, it probably took them like less than 30 seconds, less than 10 seconds, let's be honest, to kind of, uh, maybe not less than 10 seconds, but certainly less than 30 seconds to kind of be, okay, yeah, sure, we'll do that. And they reply to hundreds of people every day, but it meant so much to me. And so, yeah. I do talk about these people who I've learned from and look, I'm not out to denigrate anyone else's rules. I'm just going to say that, yeah, for me, if you want to talk about me, then feel free to do so. 
Um, I'd like to share that as well. I mean, ultimately, we we are <laughs> what's the word? We are uh, we are a brand, aren't we? You know, we, we are trying to sell our our services and our our ideas, and we want people to talk about us. They do say that all publicity is good publicity, so feel free to say whatever you like. Ultimately, if you've got anything bad to say, I kind of want to hear it too. You know, that's that's mm. great. But feel free to not share it with me. Also, that's just say what you like, and don't you don't have to tag me. It's fine. Just talk and about me all the time. That'd be great. <laughs> Hello, Rob. It is lovely to see you. And we're just on to questionably quick questions. And we've been talking about mentors and um, board games, and you know, talking about people and tagging people, which. Like, because you are saying that you come from a different generation before, like, tagging was a thing. But, like, we all learn all these things along the way. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. Oh, uh, friends. Have you ever... What's your opinion of quizzes? Let me ask you, Kath. Well, my opinion of quizzes has changed somewhat. So I used to be very keen on quizzes because quizzes were sort of a rare thing that you maybe got to do every few months and, you know, you'd go along to the local town hall or the, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice now, it's terrible. Um, but they, they would come up from time to time and they were great and it was, you know, really good fun. I'm a little bit Zoom quizzed out, I'll be honest. So mm. we've been doing a family Zoom quiz every Wednesday. It's great. It's really, really fun. But I must admit, by sort of uh, eight o'clock on a Wednesday evening, and you know, I've been working a sort of fourteen-hour day, and I'm a bit like, do I really want to do a Zoom quiz? Would I rather just sit in front of the telly? I don't know. Um, but I always enjoy it when I do it, and I, I do, I do like a quiz. I will say. I. So my issue with quizzes is that, for me, most quizzes tend to fall into the, hey, either you know it or you don't know it, and yeah. then I'm just like, oh, I know. Oh yeah, I know it's okay, great. Mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. time like, oh, uh, yeah, I don't know it. And for me, like the game that I played yesterday, I played it three times with Eric Yurko and Ian Zhang. It was called um, Master Word. H have you actually heard of Master Word? I have heard of it, yes. Although I don't, I've not played it, so I don't know it. But well, I, I have certainly heard of it. It's a cooperative game for one group and one games master. So in theory, a minimum of two people and the games master isn't doing that much. They're more being a facilitator and for this almost game show type thing. And then, yeah, we are putting in four words that you're trying to sort of be like, is it like one of these things? And then the games master kind of says, okay, this many of them were correct, kind of like mastermind. And you're trying to work how it's what it is. Now, I like that because it's you're trying to find more and more information. You're teasing it out. Or something like Wits and Wagers, where it's, okay, how many was this? No one has any idea. So you're trying to make the best estimations that you can. And yeah. there's no shame in being completely wrong. It's just, okay, wow, you were within, like, an order of magnitude of this. Well yeah. done. And, um yeah, we're puzzle um, solvers, I think, and thinkers, and it's nice to have something to get your teeth into mentally, rather than just, do you know this? Hmm. I think, yeah, ideally with a quiz, you want to have um, something where even if you don't know it, there might be some way to guess or still feel involved. Absolutely. We do, um, when I write the quiz, I always do a connecting wall. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, the quiz show um, Only Connect used to be on BBC4. Mm. Uh, what, what's her name now? Um, oh, see, this is the problem with quizzes, isn't it? You know something, but can you think of it in the moment? No, apparently I can't. Um, but, oh, Victoria Corrin Mitchell, um, she posts it. But it's essentially, you have a load of words on a, a, a four by four grid, so 16 words, and you've got to make four groups of four. So it's very much, yes, there's knowledge behind it, because you have to understand that these four things are types of pastry. These four things are, um, you know, members of the 2016 World Cup squad for rugby. And these four things are all liberal Democrat politicians. But there's always tricks. There's always sort of red herrings, things that could go together, but there's only three of them. And it's mm. it's nice because it tests your knowledge, but it, you can you can figure it out. As long as you've got a bit of knowledge, you can actually use your puzzle solving to actually make that. I know. Alex does a lot, creates, I think it's Alex creates, yeah. Alex does, 
has written about 50 of these walls over lockdown. And I saw quite a few of them. Some of them are really difficult. But maybe if you put a link up to that, then can people can see that. Um, I'll happily do some swaps. I've done, I've done sort of probably about five now, I think. And they're really fun to write. Really, really fun. So um, apparently... Victoria Corin Mitchell is also a formidable poker she, player. Famously, yes. Yeah, she's uh, a very wealthy woman, I would imagine. <laughs> You've got to wonder why she's still on the telly, but I guess she enjoys it, so why not? Okay, so <laughs> if no one else has any questionably quick questions for CAF, then let us um, move on and feel free to um, check out their links down below. And let's get stuck into... Um, introversion and board games. Mm. So feel free to comment, ask questions, thumb like, follow, try to make the questions. If, I mean, if you wanted to ask Catherine's, um, sorry, Kath's, um favourite type of duck, then now is, you know, the time has passed. You had to do that 10 minutes ago. <laughs> but, ask me later. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can ask privately, but... Um, Let's start off by getting into a typical day. Okay. Uh, recently, can you just quickly go over this and with a view to the subjects, if you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. So I think a typical day is spent um, mostly just in my kitchen on my own, accompanied by a podcast. So I'll guess up, I'll deliver my children to school in the morning, which is a sort of five to ten minute walk. I then do a lap of the town playing Pokemon Go um, because that's that's my exercise at the moment. Um, then I come home and I shut myself in the kitchen and I cook until I'm told I have to stop. Um, it's essentially, when my husband wants to cook the dinner, he tells me to stop and I grudgingly um, give control of the kitchen. I will then attempt to evade people for the rest of the evening usually not very successfully um, as children and husbands and people. They all need me or want me or something. Um, and then I go to bed after some time spent on my own, reading, pottering about the internet, working, doing whatever. And uh, that's, that's my day. So there's not a lot of interaction with, other people beyond what is required. No. <laughs> now, In short. Um, do you? Would you? Let's start off by defining. A. Would you call yourself an introvert? And B. How do you define that? Yeah. So I think it is very important to differentiate introversion from shyness which is an emotion and how we feel in the moment. Everybody feels shy sometimes. You, know, you come on a podcast and it's all a bit, oh, but that's that's just how you're feeling. That doesn't necessarily indicate anything about your personality. I think everybody feels shy. It's also important, important to differentiate it from social anxiety, which is a, <clears throat> it's a sort of a mental disorder of varying degrees. Um, you know, we all, I think most people probably experience that too at, at some time in their life. And for some people, it's obviously an enormous uh, burden that they, they have to, to deal with. Introversion is more about how we derive our energy, as I understand it. So an introvert will essentially recharge their batteries through thought and through time on their own. And that's how we, that's how we process things. That's how we energize ourselves. And I am certainly an introvert in that respect. So I'm not shy. I'm very comfortable with people. I really enjoy the company of people. Love coming on a podcast. All great. Um, with that said, I couldn't do this every day. It would it would drain me. I am, I would say, a fairly extreme introvert. I really, really need to be on my own most of the time. And I that's what I enjoy. I'm quite happy to, as you know, go and do a three day show and I love it. And I, it really, I get a lot of ideas. I get a lot of stimulation. You know, I come away with new friends and I've talked about things and I've, I've seen new stuff and it's great. But after that, I need a sort of a fire break of time to process everything that, that has happened to me. 
and I just need to be, you know, tucked away on my own. Whereas I think, mm. a, as I understand it, an extrovert very much needs people around them to to energize themselves and to to stimulate their thought processes. So yes, what about you? That's what I would like to know. Um, you mean am I an introvert or an extrovert? Yes. I mean it's. I think I need some time on my own I'm not sure like if I was um if I had someone who was literally with me all the time um eventually I think I'd it depends also what they're expecting of me like if someone's just you know sleeping in the bed with me and they're like okay we're well, just kind of you know sharing the bed maybe it's uh -huh. just a pragmatic thing maybe they're you know visiting and you know, I don't want to have them sleep on the couch. So it's like, okay, I cleaned up a little bit so that we can share this bed. And then for me, that's fine. And, you know, I know for sure there's, yeah, someone that I um, slept with in a totally platonic way where they've kind of said, okay, I need you to get out of bed. I need some time on my own. Was, wow, that's like quite a surprise to me um I think mm. that after a few days if I was literally with someone all the time I mean obviously I'm assuming that I go to shower on my own and um to the loo on my own but you know if I were I mean I definitely look if it's I would it's about um is it just about like if you are alone together because mm. this is an interesting concept like let's say yeah. i'm watching a film or i am working i would rather be working um ideally like if i had a choice would i rather be working and um, not this because i want you know a quiet thing it's nice to have my room with all the quiet but after this would i rather be in a cafe or would i rather be in a pub or in the Royal Festival Hall, or would I rather be at home? 100%, I would rather be in the Royal Festival Hall, playtesting other people's games compared to um, being in my kitchen with Chris. I, I would rather have those people around. If uh -huh. I could be um, at a convention for like a week, I don't know any conventions that last that long. I, I mean, the longest last. that I know last maybe five days. But, yeah. um, you know, I would be down for that. Um, but, like, this isn't really, it doesn't feel like the full connection. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I do. kind of, um, yeah, I do get the energy from this. And then it starts kind of winding down. And it's kind of a desperate, this is almost like a desperate bid to have people around me, if I'm being honest. Like, this is just <laughs> a thing to kind of um, be like, yeah, yeah. Um, Hello, Jess. Jess is. <laughs> we're talking about whether we are introverted or extroverted. That's um, you know, Gaff's question for me, and um, yeah. <laughs> so Alex says those bathrooms with two toilets side by side make oh. me uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with this. Are you familiar with this? I've I've heard of it, and it's a mystery. It's a mystery to me. But I guess. I guess some people are just very close or really need to go to the loo a lot. Two bathrooms? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, well. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's an interesting one. I mean, like, at that point, do you basically, do you even need a door? Like, what's, I mean, would you always keep the door open? Because if you are <laughs> using the loo and you're happy for someone else to come in and use the loo, then, I mean, like, for sure there's couples who, like, I could totally be, okay, well, we're close enough that we are, um, <laughs> helps with norovirus. Um, I'm assuming this is sarcasm. Mm. Um, I'm assuming this is like a private thing in your own house where you're like, okay, we are comfortable enough to be naked around each other all the time. Um, yeah. I mean, that's fine. And, and I will happily go in and clean my teeth while my husband's having a wee or something that's totally fine but but really i i can wait <laughs> two toilets mm. just seems excessive seems unnecessary but who knows 
I mean, if you've got there the space go. for that, I, I don't know. Um, like <laughs> we've quite. got two loos in this house, um, one upstairs, one downstairs, and um, yeah, went in and he there was um, someone downstairs who hadn't locked the door, but it was like, <laughs> oh, hey, Bez, and sorry, I won't be that long, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, um. <laughs> It's very interesting what you say about alone together. That's that's very interesting. I really like being alone together with people. That's lovely. I, I think that's um, it's something that I really look for in a friend. Actually, is is somebody that I can have in my house and ignore. That's great. I, I really really enjoy people like that. So we can both be in the same room doing different things, and you know it. It's something I used to do in pubs. I guess before board games in pubs, I had an introvert friend and we would take a jigsaw puzzle and we would go down to the pub. We'd have a pint and we'd do this puzzle and occasionally we'd talk to each other. But it wasn't required. And I think that probably leads quite neatly into the, the real beauty of board games for introverts is that you've got a, it's almost like a vehicle for spending time with people but without the absolute requirement to have a conversation. So you'll say solving a puzzle. And I think Euro games lend themselves particularly well to this. You are, you're doing some puzzle solving. And if that's something you enjoy and find relaxing, you can do it in company. You're actually all working on the same puzzle competitively, but you have the opportunity for discourse and for interaction. But in most Euro games, actually, there's not very much interaction. Mostly you are playing your own game, you are doing your own thing. And at the end, you're just finding out who did it the best. And that's something that's really satisfying. Um, I think there are types of game which lend themselves incredibly well to extroverts. And I think, you know, maybe something actually like Yogi is a really good example. It's a very uh, collaborative thing. It's a very socially stimulating thing. Um, and maybe some of the sort of more Ameritrash type games. So if you're talking about Descent or something like that, there's much more requirement for interaction. You know, there's a little bit of sort of play acting. There's there's some laughing at each other and mm. talking and that sort of thing. So I think actually the, the joy of a game is you can choose a game that fits the social needs of everyone present. And that's often how we choose, I think. It's, you know, how outgoing is everybody feeling today? How much do you actually want to talk to me? Um, if we want to talk a lot, we'll maybe go for a werewolf or something social like that, something that stimulates conversation where the game maybe isn't the objective of the yeah. exercise. Um, if we're feeling maybe a little quieter and just needing to recharge our batteries, we'll go for something like Agricola, something of that sort, where everybody can just work on it quietly on their own um yeah it, it's it's a very useful thing i think yeah that's a really good point and so something like number nine or you know if you are at least all around the same table or indeed any of the muckle style games that i did um during lockdown whether it's free mel micro muckle and um, nano muckle or whatever and um, these, or balance split, hopefully allows people to sort of engage and play together and work on their own thing whilst having other people on the screen. But you don't need to focus around it. Um, That's right. See, it's talking about, um, so I'm going to make you, oh, still can't see <laughs> much of you. Massive. But um, <laughs> see, the apartment is basically all in one room, but one person can be in the kitchen and the other one watching a movie and everyone does their own thing. But if you want to make a comment on something or ask a question or kiss them as you pass by, assuming that type of relationship, it's very easily done. And so, um, yeah, you've got this kind of, um, war, yeah, kind of let's, spend some time in the kitchen together even if we're doing different things let's yep. um i mean watching a film it can be maybe it's a difference between those people who want to be more alone and watch the film in silence and even if they are willing to say oh what did you think of that at the end yeah. compared to those people who want to watch the film very much as a social experience and um during those <laughs> quiet moments maybe say 
well, what do you think of that? Or even pause it, which, yeah. um, and for me, I, and it's also like, what kind of interaction do you want? Now, the notion of how do you recharge? I mean, it's possible for all I know that, like, you know, I, I don't know if the introvert extrovert divide is quite as clear cut as that. It's because not, it's a for spectrum. Sure, if I maybe looking at myself, and I don't know, this is maybe a voyage of self discovery, so I hope you don't mind me kind <laughs> of. Um, I definitely gain some energy from being around people. I do this. And if I don't see other people during my day, this is the highlight of my day. Now, yesterday, my other highlights, if you want to read it, go to twitter.com slash It's like, you know, seeing cats, like seeing, you know, little Louie and little um, Oscar. And, and I only say Oscar is actually pretty big for a cat. So let's be honest. But, <laughs> you know, they're little compared to me as a human. I mean, that would be, yeah, they're not big cats. They're not like tigers or lions or anything. But anyway, the point, like I saw, um, you know, maybe some pe people in the morning on my stream, some people in the chat, then some people, you know, in real life in the, and then some people in the stream later on. And then I saw Layla and, you know, I was poking George and like tickling them just because I wanted to kind of, you know, interact. And George was enjoying this. George was enjoying being tickled. I was like, oh, don't do this. Oh my God, it's a, like an attack. And then, yeah, having this thing. And it's like, um, yeah, oh. <laughs> when Bez is around here, it will make me want to play party games like Terraforming Mars, Tapestry and Scythe, says Xade. <laughs> That's a crazy um, definition of a party game. But, yeah, I was um, going to say. <laughs> Look, the point is that, um, yeah, w if it is the highlight of my day, and I need that on a daily basis. But at the same time, the things that do take away energy are firstly, um, I don't like travel so much. I mean, especially when it's cold and it's a bit miserable, and uh, that's not my favorite thing. And secondly, if you're around people and there's like this obligation to perform, if you know what I mean. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're comfortable with other people, I think I could be down with that and never have, like, properly alone space. But once in a while, like, maybe once every couple of weeks or months, like, I think I would maybe want, like, one hour to myself, like, or two hours just to read this book. And maybe even I might have a tiny preference for no one to be around just for that couple of hours a month. And so mm -hmm. I do sometimes gain energy from that. But it's more often that I gain energy from the opposite, I think. Sounds a lot like you're an extrovert. And that would have been my guess, but you can't always tell because some people, you know, in the space that you see them, they will behave in one way, but actually they're mm. feeling a different way. Um, and that's so I, I think for myself, a lot of people are surprised when I say that I'm an introvert because they encounter me in this space where I'm being very garrulous and, and you know, very sort of out there actually that's that's true i'm i am an extroverted introvert i believe is the term so mm. i love i love i love performing arts i like getting up on the stage i like being the center of attention and you know i'm, I'm quite i'm quite out there but actually that costs me there's a there's a cost involved in doing that and i need to then basically pay the piper by being alone for a time and that's mm. that's a particular thing i, be, I believe from what i've read um so I, I think you are probably definitely an extrovert, but again, I didn't want to prejudge that because I only ever no, really I see that. you face to face in that space where you are very much doing your thing and being out there and talking and, you know, um, but from everything you've just said, I would definitely say you are probably mostly needing energy from other people. Um, I have people in my life who are extroverts and who will, who will phone our house every day. My, my father-in-law is an extrovert. We see him walk past our window. He lives nearby. We see him walk mm. past our window maybe six or seven times a day, just going up to the shops to see if he bumps into anybody, you know, stopping in the street to talk to people. When it's not locked down, popping in here constantly to the point where we're a bit like, oh, really, again? You know, what are you doing here? What, why are you here? Have you got anything to say? But it's actually that he just he just wants people around and he wants to be interacting with people. And that is how he he 
does things. And I think understand introverts understanding how extroverts what work and what they need and vice versa is actually really, really important because it's very easy to get irritated by the way that other people are. And I know that I offend people sometimes who are in my life by almost pushing them away and rejecting them mm. because I just haven't got the I haven't got the energy to give them what they need. I need to be by myself. And so mm. it's this real balance, it's particularly difficult and interesting with children, I will say, <laughs> because of course they they want you to be there doing a thing, doing a jigsaw talking, watching the program they're watching, running around in the garden, can we play catch? I have to tell you this thing. Can I join in? Can I help you cook? And I think for an introvert, that's quite challenging actually to not, because you don't want to reject them. You don't want to push them away and say no. But at the same point, it's very important not to become imbalanced and to, to become unhappy at the same at the same time so yeah there's a balance and it's the same with adults you know we we as introverts need to uh need to find a constructive way of telling other people when we haven't got the bandwidth to socialize with them and one of the very best things i've ever discovered is board games because mm. they they allow me to invite people to share my space and share my activity and spend time with me and I will enjoy it and they will enjoy it. And it won't it won't drain my batteries too much. And if they're an extrovert, they have the opportunity to instigate a conversation about what we're doing or about something else. And we can do it, we can talk for as long as I am comfortable with, at which point I've got this really handy get out clause because I can say, is it your turn? <laughs> and we go back to the game. And that, that's a really nice, inoffensive way of saying actually, I'm done talking now. I want to do the thing that we're doing and not talk anymore. And yeah. I found it a very useful social crutch, I guess. Yes, it's there's a lot to unpack there. Um, firstly, I do want to um, mention that there does seem to be a wee problem with your microphone. It happened oh, no. once before where um, there was a little bit. Uh, that will be my internet connection. As I may have mentioned, we are in the countryside. Is it still is it still happening now? Um, no, it kind of it sorted itself after a minute. It was happening Good. earlier also, and then it sorted itself after two minutes. Yeah, sorry. There's not a lot I can do about it. We have got the most expensive internet connection that money can buy in this particular area, but because we're in the country, it's rubbish <laughs> so. that's totally understandable um but i think a lot of what you've talked about firstly um yeah about understanding people and about thinking okay what is everyone's needs and to some degree like the notion of introversion extroversion you know i think the worst thing to do is to generalize I mean, it's like kind of like you wouldn't say, oh, I mean, I say you wouldn't say this, but some people would. And please, for God's sake, if you would, then please um, take a good hard look at yourself. But, you know, people watching this, I hope, wouldn't say, oh, all black people are like this. Um, or, hey, all white people are like this. Or, hey, all um, Iranians are like this. Or all trans women are like this or hey and so you can say okay and this is what it means to be an introvert this is what it's likely but in some ways I want to avoid kind of the painting everyone with the same brush and saying okay this is how to take care of an introvert at a convention and for sure there's something nice about saying hey if you want to be introduced to people, yeah, sure, I'm an extrovert. So if you are not feeling comfortable being introduced to people, then come over and I will do that. And if you want, like, kind of telling other people what they're about and giving people that information up front can be a nice thing to do. But um, let's not assume that everyone is... Um, oh, um, and... 
Yeah, Seat says that they are like uh, the earlier on said they are a shy extrovert with introverted tendencies. So they were like, hey, do you want to build a snowman? Come on. Do you want to build a snowman? Do you want to play a game? No, this is already a song. Um, like, can be it. But um, do you want to play terraforming Mars or eat some chocolate bars that Seat <laughs> made? Seat makes amazing chocolate. I've not eaten even a little bit. Seat will you make me some chocolate. <laughs> anyway, so um, and that so this is that's I, our favorite. I Disney do program. absolutely agree. And um, that Seat should make me some chocolates. Is that what you're saying? That you agree with? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank I, you. I do. Um, <laughs> um, and then you'd show the chocolate art to Kath and oh we could actually yes. show that oh you want to see this quite so be, but basically mm -hmm. it's all about understanding people's needs and I think that when you talk about um sitting down and saying hey it's your turn let's stop the conversation it's about not just um understanding people's needs but understanding what the rules at this particular table are and sort of being, okay, how much are we going to talk? How much distractions are we going to play? Because if you play Ticket to Ride New York, and then you have a bunch of smoke breaks and you get drunk, then it's going to turn what <laughs> should be like a 15-minute game, I don't smoke for the record, um, into a 45-minute um, or even one-hour game. And that's just, you know, then that's not the kind of game that you want to drag out that much. Um, yeah. But it can be. It can be in certain situations. You know, sometimes sometimes that game of Ticket to Ride is is literally just the instigation for a really brilliant conversation and a really mm. brilliant evening spent drinking and talking. And, and that's absolutely fine. The great thing about having the game on the table is it's a sort of an escape route if that conversation is not really working or, you know, people are not feeling comfortable with that sort of an evening. It's a great sort of alternative thing that's, that's just conversely better. if everyone wanted to have this social conversation then it would mm. be arguably better to have something that almost ties into that yeah. something like um you know there's loads of games that are about conversation essentially like yeah. i mean just one is one say what is another yeah. that i thought it was over there but i can't actually see it which that's is right here. well that that would be my definition of a party game. You know, that's that sort of game, which is just really easy to to promote conversation. And and it, usually they have a shorter duration as well. So if it derails, mm. you haven't lost very much. I do, you know, I have had experiences where we're playing something a bit more meaty and there's maybe one or two players who are really, really into the game. They want to play the game. They're really frustrated with the conversation that's going on. People taking ages to get around to realizing it's their turn. Somebody's playing on Facebook. Somebody's having a chat, and and they're not really following it. And I think you can you can see the frustration in those players who are really really enjoying the game. And I think it's it's so it is very important at the outset to have that sort of social agreement of what it is that everybody wants out of the evening. Um, For sure, alignment. Yes, that's right. And something this is Kate's chocolate art, by the way. It is a beautiful thing. I have actually seen that one. I do follow her on social media, um, which so I do really enjoy always seeing the chocolate art. It's great. And yes, um, should um, show more pictures of the chocolates because you know you can have multiple pictures um, on your thing. But um, yeah, look, let's. Um, talk about how do you feel your introversion i don't want you to speak for anyone else but how do you feel like your introversion manifests itself when you are playing games um again i think as you rightly said earlier it it's very much a sort of a it how it is for me so i as you say i can't speak for everyone i am not an introvert in the same way as I'm not any other one thing, in exactly the same way as any other label that we can apply to people. Yes, I am an introvert, but that doesn't always mean that I manifest 
as an introvert. So with that said, um, I love games that are not confrontational or that explicitly are. I like it to be one thing or the other. So I actually really don't enjoy Ticket to Ride, which is a thing we were just speaking about. I've played it a number of times. I don't hate it, but I don't like the fact that other people can mess with me. So, you know, I've got my puzzle to solve. I'm trying to optimize and work out the best way to do this and the best way to do that. And I don't like the fact that I can spend ages building up this really cool thing and then someone else can break it. And that just makes me feel sad. And I don't like mm. having to <laughs> sort of mess with them either. Conversely, I love playing things like Werewolf and I love, you know, sort of fibbing to people and, and the sort of intrigue style games. So those are great too. I think that if I'm in the right mood, I love the confrontation. I love an argument. It's great, you know, let's let's have a good old set too about something that doesn't matter, e.g. Am I a villager or not? It's great, you know, really good fun. Then afterwards, everyone has a good laugh about it. Um, but uh, I, on an average evening, I want to play either either a cooperative game or I want to play something where I exist in a silo. So I really like something like Kalis, where you've got worker placement, where the only confrontation is who places their worker on which station. So Stone Age, lots of Euro games are like that. No, I was going to say there's actually quite a bit of interaction in yes. Kalis. I mean, it's definitely a step above something like um, Karuba, Take It Easy, any of these true yeah. multiplayer solitaire games. Yes, it is. Um, but the great thing is that the confrontation is is purely who gets to what first. Mm. You can't completely break somebody else's fabulous thing that they're building. I think Agricola bothers me the most. I play Agricola solo quite a lot. I'm a, I'm a great player of solo games. Quite often that's just opportunity based. So I have the opportunity to play a game on my own quite frequently. Or I did before I was so busy. Um, but I, I used to do that in the evenings as a, as a great way to unwind. And sometimes people would come round to my house and say, oh, you know, should we all play together? No. no, if we're going to play together, let's play a different game because I do not want you to break my fence or steal all my sheep or stop me from getting the cool thing that I want to get. If I play solo, I'm, you know, I can do the optimal thing all the time and it's, it's so much more fun. Um, so I, I guess that's the line for me personally. Um, oh, and <laughs> that's a really interesting one. I know that um, there's also a difference between destructive and um, positive player interaction. For example, yeah, yeah I know that um, Gil Hova is very big. They call themselves a care bear on, and saying, yeah, I don't want any direct player interaction that's negative. If someone's saying, okay, you can do this, or something that's okay, there's a little bit of block, but... And so if you look at something like um, the networks or high rise, then that reflects their sensibilities. And we've got a big comment from Elaine who says, they're listening to the conversation and they've learned that they're probably quite introverted. They like people, they like talking to people and hanging out, but Elaine is absolutely awful, so Elaine says, at instigating it. I mean, I would, I'm not sure I would personally agree, but like, I, I don't want to, you know, gaslight Elaine. Like, I, I think that, you know what, um, I don't know. Yeah. I, that I sounds mean, to I, me Elaine more like Elaine social anxiety. A lot more than I know a lot. Yeah. And um, Elaine's, yeah, trying. I think this is it. That at the start you talked about um, introversion is not shyness. Introversion is not that social anxiety. Introversion is how you get your things. And what Elaine is talking about is having those rules at the start to kind of be like, okay, this is what's going on. And yeah, Sate says, yes, if I don't know the rules of the situation or the people, I'm worried that I'm not doing it correctly. And that's a completely different thing. Yes, it is. And I think... Oh, you um, don't need to apologise. Um, oh, no, no. It's, it's really interesting to hear other people's take on it. But, it, yeah, it is, 
it is a slightly different thing and it's it all interplays which is why we're all different you know you can you can pigeonhole people and we like to have these conversations about well, you know what are you and what are you and how do you fit into this very simple puzzle but actually we're all incredibly complicated and things but it's I guess it's more about understanding that introversion and extroversion is a thing appreciating that that does color the way that people operate and just just when interacting with people just adding that into the mix when trying to consider what what people might want to do I, it, I think it's more about making people feel less upset by other people's actions less troubled by the way other people act you know, I, I just want everybody to know that when somebody says they don't want to spend time with another person or they don't want to do a particular thing, it's very often not going to be because they actually don't want to do that thing or they don't want to see you personally. For me, I, I often very desperately do want to see that person. I just know that I very much, I, I more need time by myself. And that if I do spend that time with that person, it's going to cost me and it is going to lead to me feeling tense and tired and just not quite like myself for a couple of days thereafter. So it it's just assessing what I can and can't achieve, essentially. And I don't want people to feel upset by that. So it's important to me that other people understand it's, it's purely about how, how tired I am feeling mm. in that particular sense. If I may kind of broaden it and go on a kind of bit of a tangent, because it feels like, um, yeah, for, I mean, I'm not here to psychoanalyze you, Elaine, or you, Kath, or anyone in chat, and I'm not, I don't even know myself, like, properly, 100%, and this is like a journey for all of us to learn about ourselves, and also to learn about other people. And I think that if I could achieve anything from this conversation, it would be like, um... <laughs> sorry, oh man, oh, sorry. Um... <laughs> um, but um, yeah, basically, I, yeah, I am not here to psychoanalyze you, but um, and sorry to disappoint, but if we can, if I can get anything out of this conversation, I think for me it would be understanding and like kind of what that's why that's a big part of these things. Like honestly, like this started off as me just being like, yeah, I need to get out of bed. I need to be something okay, have some people. Oh, it would be nice if um I'd like to talk to Richard Denning of UK Games Expo. Okay, if I'm having them on, I should probably have someone else on first. Okay, I'll talk to Alan Paul. Hey, this is nice. It's not as good as having people in your house, but it's kind of you know, when you can't have people in your house, it's almost the next best thing. It's kind of like, you know, you are there maybe five meters away from me and we're having this kind of conversation. So we can't actually touch or anything. But you know what I mean? It's kind of got that aspect to it. But now it's kind of like I'm learning from people. I'm learning like design techniques and marketing techniques. So I'm learning other people's views, points of views, because that's one of the brilliant things about conversation for me. And I think that's one important thing that I've learned is that... Um, my takeaway is that if you are like maybe a little bit socially anxious, then you're maybe going to need those rules and you're like, okay, how exactly do I interact in this situation? And as you understand those rules, you're likely to enjoy spending time and then you're like, okay, I will um, be happy to spend like the, you know, hours or days here. Like oh, quite often events don't last days, but you know what I mean? And um, yeah, conversely, if you are an introvert at a convention, because let's talk about conventions a little bit, mm -hmm. it strikes me that whereas someone who's anxious might be like, okay, I need to work out those rules. Okay, I've worked out these rules. Now these are the people that I'm comfortable with. I understand what's going on with this social dynamic, this magic circle. Okay, I'm going to spend, um, you know, maybe not like days, but eight hours a day with them for like a long weekend. Whereas an introvert might be like, okay, I've enjoyed time with you, but now I need to go off and have lunch on my own. Whereas I'd be like, okay, I'm going off to have lunch. I'm going to sit on my table um, whilst hopefully watching people 
play my games or kind of chipping in occasionally and teaching people games while I have my lunch or sitting beside, um, was it Jason Freud? I think Jason Freud, who I don't know if they still work for Lucky Duck Games, but then I think that was at, was that actually at this aircon? Yeah, the last aircon that I might ever go to. Oh my gosh, sorry, sorry for sad stuff. But um, yeah, I saw Elaine there. That, it was magical. It was magical times. Anyway, mm. um, but then kind of, whereas I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like, you know, this is me learning about myself where it's like, okay, I'm going to try and do you want this time on your own is the kind of hallmark of whether you're an introvert or not. I think that's that's a good way to look at it, yes. Yeah, you've got mm. lunch and you've been socializing do I want lunch with other people do I want lunch on my own yes that is a a good way to look at it um I can certainly tell you that at, at Aircon at that exact same event you know I actually I went out dutifully the first night loved it had a wonderful time lots of socializing the second night I went back to my hotel room and I was on my own for the whole night because I really needed that break mm. um, I mean, Elaine sounds like point. there might be some introverted tendencies mixed with anxiety. I don't know, because yeah. um, if you're feeling like you need to have that walk around town, like I definitely enjoy walking around Harrogate, but I feel like I would, when I get to stand, honestly, like it's not, <sighs> look, my business, um, and it's like a weird thing because I'm, you know, I'm heading off to Thailand. I don't know if you saw that on my Facebook, but um, sorry, I lose track of everyone who responded to it because there was a lot of outpouring of kind of people saying good wishes and everything, which I really massively appreciate. And I would love to have like some sort of party, like if it's, I don't know if that's going to be realistically well, possible before I leave. But, um, you know, but... I would enjoy walking around on my own, but I'm not like, but I am there because I love, I adore kind of just teaching my games to people. And it's an excuse in many ways to be the center of attention. Like, and um, <laughs> yeah, there's, look, how can, how can Mark Cook know? They are planning for it. They want it to happen. Same with UK Games Expo, they are planning for it. And yes. but um, and Saint says they need time for themselves too. Sometimes it's gotten more as I've gotten older, and the worse I am doing emotionally, the more I need to be alone. I think part of it is from the point of view of not wanting to burden others with my own. Um, I'm going to interpret this as depression or sad vibes. So I try to find some time away from people to feel the meh a bit and work through it on my own. Yeah. That's an interesting thing, uh, because I think that comes comes from a place of how do we process our trauma, sadness, uh, just low points in our lives. And I don't know whether that plays into introversion and extroversion or not. I think for myself, yes, I really, really need to be alone in those times. I've got no idea whether that's because I'm an introvert or just because that's how I how I process things. You know, I, I need to think and I need to just get through it. And I don't necessarily find other people's encouragement necessary. But that may just be that may just be another facet of who I am, another facet of my personality. Um, you know, and I think this is where my my the lack of an actual expert on the subject sort of sort of would be brilliant to have. But it's it's just a really interesting set of thoughts to open up to everybody to take away from this. And um, we have a wee clarification. Um, it says that basically they don't want to burden other people to, who talk about mm -hmm. their divorce all the freaking time. And also talking about it limits possible new relationships. So it isn't good for long term socializing. Um, some people are just too much time burns me out, not enough makes me sad. So it sounds like you are an introvert and that you gain that energy, you've got that limit. And I think the important thing to be aware of is that everyone has those limits. And I just want to acknowledge Elaine, who
who apparently just found out that I'm going to Thailand. Um, and so, um, yeah, I thought we were Facebook. Friend. No, maybe not. Um, so anyway, so basically, um, I am going to Thailand and um, just because I don't have Catherine all the time, I'd like to focus on, you know, introversion today. But yeah, I will be very happy to talk about this um, maybe tomorrow because tomorrow I've decided that Sundays we aren't going to necessarily stop at two hours or just, although we'll try to keep it about two hours, but I'm just going to review a whole bunch of things with Chris tomorrow. And especially Fridays, um, I want to say, and which Friday, sorry about this, um, on 27th, on of November onwards, every Friday is just going to be a friendly Friday forum, which is just going to be like, ask me anything, and I will be happy to talk all about that. Also, I'm actually going to start having some Thai people on to get to know them, frankly, before I get go there. And one person in early December is going to be Quang. And then I'm hoping to have a couple of board game shops from Thailand who've agreed to kind of come on, but we've not arranged an actual time. But, you know, fingers crossed that happens. And, That's fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. But, really looking yeah, forward lot, to hearing that. Lots of love. And, yeah, it's all be... Um, I do plan, long story short, assuming um, a world similar to 2019, I would come back once a year to the UK for UK Games Expo. But obviously, I will be incredibly busy during UK Games Expo because I expect to have a burgeoning stand. And um, I'm talking to people about um, stuff. Sorry for the big tangent. Um, I, and um, yeah, but that's some stuff I can talk in, about later on. And hello, Nicholas, and who does agree for or the need for balance. And um yeah. On oh, no need to apologize. Lots of love, <laughs> Elaine. You are one of the most wonderful people. Um and so um let's talk about um I'm reluctant to do this, but I, normally when we talk about something, we I like to talk about okay, why is it good? Why is it bad? I mean, is it reductive to do that for a whole psyche, or? No, I don't think so. Not not any more than I mean, we you know, sort of stepping ahead a little bit. Obviously, we're going to be talking about gender and game design, I believe, in in the future. And I don't think it's reductive to talk about the positives and negatives of of any label that we may apply to ourselves. You know, I don't think that that is necessarily reductive. Uh, just by doing it. So carry on. Okay, well, in that case, what are the great things about being an introvert? I think it makes one a better listener and potentially more empathetic. Yeah, I, I sort of hesitate to apply these, again, to apply broad labels to something that's so uh, ethereal and so diverse but I do think that somebody who spends an awful lot of their time thinking and processing and just listening um, is is more likely to take stock of what they've heard and to run it through a filter and, and to come out with new ideas and, and to you know maybe think outside the box a little bit more in that sense when it comes to other people's uh, what you know what they've heard from somebody else. That, that's a, a tendency that I would be inclined to apply to a more introverted personality. Um, hmm. That would be my, my main answer, really. Does that make sense? Because maybe you aren't always feeling the need to inject yourself or be exactly. there. That's right. I think that's very true. And, and again, I've, I've said before, I am an extroverted introvert. So when I'm in company, I love to be there and I have lots to say and I want to say it. But when it comes to a more normal social interaction, not necessarily a party or a convention or something big, I do tend to listen and I do tend to step back and I do tend to just process what I'm hearing in the background. So, And 
do you think that there's any problems with being an introvert other than yeah i was going to I say mean, the obvious fact that sometimes you can't keep up with everyone yeah. and you might want to spend time with people but you don't have the energy but are there any other things that people should be aware of i mean i think i think what you've said is absolutely the biggest one you know the i have I have kept the friends who I think can relate to it the best for a very, very long time. You know, I've got people in my life who have been in my life all of my life. Um, and I don't make new friends quite so easily, perhaps. So I tend to have a, a smaller and more consistent group of people in my life who all understand that I can't keep touching base with them constantly. I uh, just don't have the time. With that said, there is a possibility that people get upset or offended and it can it can actually hurt other people. I think probably in my life, the biggest pitfall has been having children. I don't think that being an introvert lends itself particularly well to particularly young children who, who need a lot of you, who want a lot of you. And mm. the sacrifices that have to be made, you know, I, I really do have to put myself out there an awful lot more than I am quite comfortable with. Um, interestingly as well, I, I have two children, one of whom is a very much an introvert and the other is very much an extrovert. The introvert, no problem. We will sit, we will play board games, we will watch a film, we will do things that I'm very comfortable with and she's very comfortable with and that's lovely. The other one, she wants to talk, she wants to do, she wants to see people constantly. It's every night, play date, play date, play date. And she has suffered terribly through lockdown. You know, she has really struggled with this not seeing people. And uh, I, I have to really try to relate to that. I have to make a lot of effort to understand where she is coming from. Um, so yes, it can, it can definitely damage interpersonal relationships and that is a pitfall, yeah. Aww. And like, sorry, this is you can you can say pass to this question. This might be too personal or an imposition. I was going to ask, um, do you have any regrets about um, becoming a parent? Um, that's a, that is an interesting question. It's not an imposition at all. It's just a very interesting question. I mean, yes, I do. I, um, but not of the, I wish I could take it back variety. It changes things and all the rest of it. I wouldn't change it. So there's mm -hmm. that. <laughs> I'm glad I did it. But there are definitely ways in which I am a lot less comfortable than I used to be. I can't control my socialising as well as I used to. I'm forced to interact with a lot of people, the PTA, the teachers, the other parents, the making play dates. I'm forced to have this huge social circle that I'm not quite comfortable with. And I'm, <laughs> so that is one difficulty. And the other difficulty is I'm now sharing my space constantly with more people than I would ideally <laughs> like to be. You know, I I live in a house that's it's it's quite a big house, but it's got very few rooms. So it's got a few very large rooms, which makes it actually very difficult to sort of shut a door and say, this is my space. Mm. There's just always bodies buzzing around. There's somebody in the background doing a thing. There's somebody asking you a question. There's somebody shouting at somebody else because something. And that's a space that I'm very uncomfortable in. But that's a temporary situation. You know, children age and as they get older, their needs will change. They will probably spend more time either away from the house or in the house, but with other children. Um, one thing I'm very keen to do. And of course, do, lockdown uh, must have made this incredibly difficult oh, for you. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a challenge, I won't lie. And I think that... For, on the one hand, for introverts, I think that lockdown has in some ways been a bit of a blessing. You know, we've been able to reach out to people on uh, electronically. You know, we've been able to do the Zoom quiz and all that sort of thing. And it's it's great from that point of view. I do not feel, as some people I know do, the loss of my social life. I don't feel lonely. I don't feel stressed by the, my inability to go out. So that's wonderful. But 
I'm confined in this small box with three people. And that's really stressful. Um, you know, I want them to go away. <laughs> and they can't. Mm. And nor should they. Um, and I can't go away either. Although I will say, actually, a, a funny thing that happened to me recently, sort of thematic. Um, as soon as I was able, so once I would sort of got work to a nice balancing point and we were no longer in lockdown, I actually ran away. I actually went on holiday <laughs> on my own. Uh, very controversial um, to the children. My husband understood completely because he's an introvert too. Um, and I, I just I just went. I just got in the car and I went away for three days. And I went to Barnard Castle, which for anyone who follows the news um, is a place that I just thought would be the funniest place to go during lockdown. Um, it's it's where a certain Dominic Cummings went during the um during the first lockdown. I mean, be... I'm assuming you didn't actually stay in the castle. No, no, it's it's a town called Barnard Castle, <laughs> for reference. But no, I, I just went, I just drove, uh, I just got in the car, went to Middlesbrough, never been there, didn't know what was there, went to Durham, went to Barnard Castle, just did a little tour of the country on my own, barely spoke to anyone. It's great. I, lo I love doing stuff like that. And yeah, having children, it's a bit harder to, to do, but it recharged me so much that when I came back, I just felt completely balanced again. And I was much happier spending time being, being lively. And, and yeah, it was really helpful. And um, if, before we get into the tips, which is normally what I like to do at this point, um, let me just um, say that it's kind of making me realize, hey, wait a minute, I have memories of 15 years ago going around Thailand and Malaysia and Sing Singapore was only for two, two nights, three days. But, you know, for the bulk of it, yes, I was with other people, but I was traveling on my own. And there was a lot of solitary kind of just wandering around, eating street food and just enjoying myself. And maybe, I'm look, I'm not going to say that this is the way I am, but maybe it's the case that I just really like being around people, like being, not being around people makes me actually depressed. It, that's possible. I'm not going to refute that. But it's also possible that uh, maybe I do need that time alone to recharge maybe every like five years. Maybe I'm just like an introvert with a very slow um, very long, battery. Long battery life. Yeah. That's really possible. I, I think everybody needs time on their own for reference. I, I do think that however outgoing one is, however extrovert is, you know, everybody needs time alone. And actually everybody who's an introvert, I still, I love people. I, I need time with people. I need to see people. That's why, why I come on this podcast. You know, I need to have this in my life. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think, I think that's, I, that just sounds so brilliant though. The idea of just going abroad and just wandering about. I think I'm having a midlife crisis, Bez. I need, I need to, I need to be a student Aww. again and go forth and, wander about in the countryside that'd be lovely <laughs> let's um do some when we're talking about design stuff i like to say hey how what are some ways we can do this thing well and i would like to talk about not just how can we kind of if you are an introvert you know if you're not sure if you're an introvert um like what tips do you have to anyone to kind of navigate their energy around being other people, because that's what it's all about. And navigating those social dynamics, navigating when you're... Of course, it is a board game show, ostensibly. So let's um, talk about yeah. when you're rolling dice or playing an RPG or playing... Um, like, we can talk about RPGs, that's also totally cool, or playing yeah. a board game yeah. or, what's, uh, or at a convention, or just in general life. How can we kind of navigate those social interactions. Mm, it's very interesting. Um, I mean, I can I can actually see three different conversations that have been presented to me here. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll pick one. Um, so there's, there's game design. And I think as game designers, we do have a an opportunity to consider how more extroverted and more introverted people will interact with our game. You know, is it is this a game that can be enjoyed by somebody 
who is very outgoing and who wants that social dynamic and who wants the conversation. Is this a game that stimulates social conversation? Is this a game that can that people can retreat from the social conversation? Because some some games you can't. It is all about the social. So it's just having that knowledge. Who am I designing for? I think, and I can't. You know. I can't really think of too much further to go down that that mm. rabbit hole. Um, if we're talking about RPGs, now that's a that's a fascinating topic because RPGs are, are intrinsically very social, but different people play them differently. Now, I have recently started um, playing Pathfinder again uh, after uh, many 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 years. I think I was twenty one the last time I played a, an RPG for reference. I won't tell you how long ago that is. It's a long time. And I've just been, I've been loving it. I've been having the best time. It's great. But I play very much from a puzzle solving kind of perspective. I play with a group where people are very thespian. It's a very theatrical group. You know, people are doing the voices and they're, they're playing the thing and they're doing the thing that their character would do, which is, great role playing, very entertaining to be around, really love it. But I, I, I will be honest, I sometimes break character because I've figured out the thing that we should do, which is bad role playing in, you know, in inverted commas. But that's yeah. how I play and that's how I derive fun from it. And I think it's good. It's, it's, it's appreciating that different people will take an RPG and make something different out of it depending on their, the way that they are. I, I mean, still do the voice. I'm sure too. that whole thing kind of goes back to what we were talking about, of managing the expectations around the table and making sure that you're all aligned. And I'm not talking about the good, evil, lawful, chaotic <laughs> alignments, but making sure that as players, obviously, if you all want to be the epitomization of these characters, then that's what everyone wants to do because frankly if one person is all about um beating the challenges and min maxing everything and then yeah. someone else is all about kind of taking time with the story and actually role playing then you know one of those two people is probably going to have a bad time at the table and it's yeah. possible that sometimes the answer is don't play together and that feels a bit sad to say but, you know, you yep. can spend time together doing other things. Maybe if you really want to spend time together, you could have a conversation or to play other games. But maybe for this role playing, you want to say, OK, this is a table full of people who like all the voices and all the acting and all the improvising. And this is a table for the people who like the puzzle solving and the um, strategic stuff and what's not. Yeah, I think that that's absolutely true. And I've noticed an enormous change in, in 20 years since I first picked up um, role playing. We used to play, you know, we were sort of geeky, spotty teenagers and our, our DM was a geeky, spotty 22 year old, you know, and we it was all about the, the min maxing. It was all about the biggest dice rolls and who's got the best armor. And we were just constantly dying because the DM was hyper competitive and loved to kill us. Uh, so it was, <laughs> it was that, it was, it was more like a board game. I've lost count of how many characters I got through. It was ludicrous. You know, I never made it past level three. You know, that was how it was played. <laughs> I knew no better. That was, that was, that was D and D. Um, so when I kind of came back to it this time and I went into this Pathfinder group and they they almost interviewed me before letting me into the group. It was almost a sort of, OK, what do you want out of this? What kind of a player are you? And these are people who know me very well, to be clear. These are people I'm, you know, very good friends with or related to in one case. But they they did sort of ask me, you know, are you... Are you looking for this experience? Are you looking for that experience? What are your triggers? What are your, you know, are there any sensitive topics that you don't want to deal with? Wonderful questions to ask somebody coming into a new group. And I think it's super important, but it was great. You know, it all gelled. It was all really good. And I'm now in my second group because they've actually started a second group as well and different people, slightly different because it's people who are newer to it, which I'm finding really satisfying and really enjoying it. Um, 
I'm playing a, I'm playing a goblin, by the way. Um, I'm a goblin bard who is has a slightly split personality. He's got two puppets. He's got a, a glove puppet and he's got a dead squirrel puppet. And he they basically tell him what to do. So one of them's constantly telling him to go and kill everything and the other one's telling him not to. So he's sort of a very conflicted character. It's really, really fun to play. Um, so although I'm sort of doing the puzzle solving aspects, I've also got a huge amount of role play to draw on there, which is quite nice. <laughs> Yeah, there's something lovely about that. Obviously, touching upon the safety in role playing and you know making sure everyone's got that emotional safety. But I mean, again, it's all about that understanding and making sure that we are aligned. And um, if there's like one tip for the people around you, it feels like that big tip would be to make sure that um, understanding those boundaries. And maybe it's also about establishing those boundaries to say, hey, I do want to be your friend, but for me, the word friend has a slightly different definition. Like maybe for you, friend means that we hang out every couple of weeks or we have a nice chat. But for me, that means that maybe we touch base, you know, maybe three times a year. That's what I expect. And But I still respect you as a human and I still want you in my life. And That's kind of it. being okay with someone saying that. And because it's easy to take um, someone saying, no, I don't want to hang out with you as a personal rejection. Yes. It is so easy to do. I mean, look, I have a fragile ego. Um, I, I, I mean, look, I'm not going to say that I have a more fragile ego than some people for sure. I can go into... Royal Festival Hall and have people rip apart my game. I can have, you know, people on Board Game Geek say how terrible something is or how rubbish it is and be like, okay, well, I actually am starting to appreciate that and respect that. And so, you know, there's some also divorcing your ego from what you've projected, if you know what I mean. So it's yeah. like, yeah, this is a thing that I've done. It doesn't mean that um, them not liking this it that someone not liking my creation is not a reflection necessarily on me as a person. Absolutely. I mean, if someone were to say, oh, I hate Yogi, the person who made it must be a stupid idiot poo-poo head. You know, <laughs> I would be like, okay, I'm not, that's just ridiculous. I'm not going to even take that seriously. But, you know, if I were to take that seriously, that's, you know, per pretty personal, if you know what I mean. You know, let's not get into talking about the designer, for gosh sake. Um, and so please, um, just um, let's mellow out a little bit, you know what I mean? But more importantly, like if someone says, okay, more realistically, if someone says, okay, I hate this game, this is absolute trash, it's like, okay, I understand that, I appreciate you kind of sharing that with the world, I guess, and, um, you know, it's not a reflection on me. If someone says, by the same token, I don't want to spend time with you tonight. It doesn't mean that you don't want to spend time with you ever. It's not a reflection on you. If And also, it might, people have different boundaries. If it's like, you know, I don't want to have you in my house, maybe they're just a lot more private person than you. Maybe they don't have anyone in their house. You know, do you get what I'm saying? And I guess it's about being having those boundaries, establishing those boundaries, if I may say, like if I may offer my own tips and like kind of, being okay with other people presenting those boundaries and in whatever play group we are we need to set these expectations in any kind of social dynamic we are we need to set these expectations yes i think there's a lot to be said for being very candid about who we are and how we feel and what we expect to get from other people because it it prevents these misunderstandings and it's it's managing people's expectations is everything it really is and it it just helps everybody to feel comfortable and accepted on mm. on whatever level has been presented to them um yeah i mean i i fully agree with everything you've just said and talking about role playing games going back a little bit um yeah i just want to acknowledge this conversation in chat um Elaine saying that your interview process, I think, sounded brilliant. Kate said that at the start, he didn't understand RPGs when he could have played them easily. But 
they were scared to admit that they didn't know how to do them. Now they get it and they would love to be involved, but they don't have the opportunity. And then um, we had um, Alex saying, hey, randomly, what's about terraforming Mars bars? <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then, yeah, go to a bar <laughs> themed around terraforming Mars. I mean, this feels pretty darn niche. Not just a game themed around board games, but to... One I mean, board game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there. if it was, like, expanding it out to be all the board games about Mars, I mean, or maybe all the board... Mm. All the scientifically accurate games about planets, I think there would be at least three... <laughs> So I'll tell get... you what it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be the crew. The crew is shocking. <laughs> the, the narrative is awful. The scientific accuracy is way off. So it's a great game, but that part is like, wow, this is, this is bad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you could have, like, Mars-themed things and maybe, like, oxygen tanks. Like, you know, if you want to do of oxygen, maybe kind of get your drink out of little drips. Like, I don't know. Um, Quite there was like that idea. a bar in Bremen that looks like a golden cave. They just need to paint it red. Um, oh, oh! If I if I was to do my own board game cafe, something we thought about years ago. I and mean, I'm I'm talking 15 years ago before board games were a thing. Me and my husband were like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could have a cafe? People came and played board games. There, what a great idea! You know, classic. Didn't do it. Um, but I would have a. I'd have one based around Cluedo. Because I'm a bit obsessed with Cluedo. As a board game designer, I'm well aware it's an awful game, but I am a bit obsessed with it thematically. It's lovely. And I'd have like a sort of a, you know, ballroom and a, a study in the corner, some, a secret passage. It's, funnily enough, actually, when I when I went to Barnard Castle, the, the place, um, I actually came across um, somewhere near there. There was a, um, there was a little pub that was themed around Harry Potter. It was a Harry Potter pub of all the things so that's really cool so I, i'm all for i'm all for theme theme things i think I, yeah i think if, given the proliferation of board games cafes why not all have a theme instead of them all just being a board game cafe with an amusing pun name that also sells a few pokemon cards and magic the gathering why not why not go full-on theme let's do it i think you're right <laughs> like i mean okay so there is this i know this um I think we should just wind down before descending into the chaos. And then I'm going to talk about um, settlers. And when I say wind down, I, mean, I basically mean have a, some sort of recap. Or should I have the tangents and then the recap? Um, okay, so there's this place in Hamilton. So for those who don't know, Hamilton is a place near Glasgow in Scotland. And I've seen Hamilton. It is great. I don't mean I've seen the musical. I've not seen that. I've not had the opportunity. But I've seen Hamilton. So, yeah, I got tickets to Hamilton. Like, it's really cheap. It's about um, £2 to go and see Hamilton if you want, assuming you live in Glasgow. And if you live farther away, and if you want tickets to Hamilton, then you've got to, you know, spend, you know, get to Glasgow first. And then you go from Glasgow to the overground and then go to Hamilton. Anyway, so the point is that um, there's this place called Settlers. It's run by a lovely person called Shaz. Um, Shaheen Savarnajad is their full name. And Shaz and I used to play games together when we were both in Glasgow and were friends. And I did this whole Jungle Speed tournament for my birthday. Good times. I reached out to this person who was my idol. And then I met this person like in 2019 at Cannes. It was amazing. Tom Varshaw who actually said, yeah, sure, you can run uh, the official Jungle Speed World Championship. And as far as we've established, that was the um, one and only Jungle Speed official World Championship as sanctioned by the designer of Jungle Speed. So, yeah, well, I mean, I know that Asmodee's had other things, but they've never called it the World Championship, whereas, you know, mine was the World Championship. Also, I had someone flying in from America because, you know, we knew each other from the internet. I had someone flying. There were at least three countries involved. And I'm not counting, you know, Scotland and England as different countries. I mean, three proper countries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so, Settlers, it's 
based on three things, says Shaheen Shaz, I should say. So it's based on, firstly, obviously, Settlers of Catan, which is now known as Catan. Secondly, it's based on, hey, here's something for people to settle in, have a drink and play a board game. And thirdly, Shaz was seeing it as a place for themselves to settle. Like they saw this as, okay, I've been around the world, I've been to Japan, I've seen quite a bit, now I want to settle down. I've got like a beautiful partner, I've got like this cute little dog and we want to settle down and grow this business and be have this be our final thing. And so, no, if you want to go to Hamilton, you can go to Hamilton for way less. I mean, it costs like... Um, if you get the bus, you know, get the coach, you know, 20 quid return. And then from Glasgow, it's two quid on the train. True story. Remember, we're not talking about the um, musical, but I do like that. Um, but uh, <laughs> so anyway, the point <laughs> is that um, you could, Shaz did not do any theming based on Settlers of Catan. Disappointment. Oh, I mean, they could have had, like, tops of the tables based on the different locations. Maybe this is a desert table. This is the kind of forest table where you get the wood. You know, yeah. it's just, like, they just kind of have some allusions to it. Just, like, some, a bit more art on the wall. Just some nod to the theme. I think you're right on. Spot on, Calf. And I think we should be like, yeah, even if it's just a token nod to a game, pick a game and go yeah. with it. Absolutely, because why not? And I'm not going to not go to a bar, a, a board games cafe, just because it's themed around a game that I don't particularly like. I'll still go. It'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> and people are talking about Cluedo. Um, um, yeah. Sorry. And <laughs> people are. Um, I like that you're walking around a house in Cluedo. I don't know where Cluedo came in. Did we mention Cluedo? I did. Yeah. It's it's. It's my idea for a board games cafe. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you could. Oh, did if people weren't here, like Alex and I were talking about um, burlesque and board games, and there's a Cluedo themed mm. burlesque troupe, or How at awesome. least they did. Maybe not the whole troupe all the time, but they did at least one act on at least. Um, I think it was three nights that it was based around Cluedo. Love it. <laughs> I just found this out on the internet. So um yeah, you could totally have that and maybe you've got murder weapons that mm. like aren't actually murder weapons, just like kind of a candlestick. Oh, and uh. it, you know, <laughs> a bit of a rope and yeah. yeah. Is there a wrench? I can't remember what else. And like a yeah, bottle of a mustard wrench. like in the fridge, always ah yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah, no, it'd be great. I think um I mean, it probably wouldn't. It'd probably be rubbish, but I, I just ah. like the idea. So, I mean, if I had if I had unlimited revenue, if I had unlimited funds, I would literally build the Cluedo mansion and live in it. That would be just... And I'd have parties. Because although I'm an introvert, I do love a party. I like to host a party. Yeah, one night only. How often would you have a party? Oh, well, at the moment... No, not so, let's not talk about at the moment. Let's talk like about in say, 2019. <laughs> in 2019, um, we probably had only a couple. We do a big one at Christmas and we usually do something in the summer. But before we had children, we had sort of probably six a year. It was, you know, we'd have a, a Eurovision party. That was always great fun. It was it was an outlet for all our creativity and all our socialising in one go. Um, we'd sort of make we'd make nibbles of each country taking part in Eurovision and we'd do sort of a we'd have a sort of gambling thing where you could bet 50p on the winner and that sort of it, nothing nothing too extravagant we're not talking a mask ball but we'd have you know sometimes 20 people in the house and that was brilliant but now we've got all the socializing and all the creative outlet that we need you know I'm forced to make pictures out of pasta and things out of play-doh twice a week so I'm I'm all creative now. <laughs> Plus, I've got a creative business now. So, again, that's an outlet that I don't need anymore. So, no, but maybe we'll go back to it. Sounds amazing. And, like, your parties, even though they might not be the most flamboyant things, it sounds like you were making a proper effort there. Oh, um, always. <laughs> I mean, I would say that I had people over maybe... Um, it would be kind of an open invite, maybe 
um, once or twice a week in 2019. Nice. So on Thursdays, it was like, okay, everyone come to play board games. Like on other nights, you know, maybe you'd play board games just in the house. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it would be like, okay, we're having this thing. Or I think that's if I, you know, when I'm, anyway, let's, oh, we've got um, Elaine wants to be Colonel Mustard. Um, and is Green Miss Peacock? Green is... Reverend Green, I believe. Oh, yes. What? Just get yourself a dog collar. You'll be fine. What's um, Miss Peacock? Blue. Oh, okay. I completely got that wrong. Okay. <laughs> she could be green. There's no actual reason why she shouldn't have been green, but she was blue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Reverend Green sounds good. Um, <laughs> and you do have Peacock Blue, of course. Absolutely. But um, this is the sad time when we have to accept that all good things must come to an end. It has been lovely having you. And I'm just searching for my banners. And we've talked about so much today. We've talked about houseplants and photosynthesis and oxygenation. We've talked about um, empires of the north and the crew and eons end. We've got about, uh, talked about um talking about other people and talking about people behind their backs and yeah feel free to say things about me and have said the same we talked about puzzles and quizzes and rpgs and introversion not equaling shyness or anxiety it's about how we energize ourselves it's we talked a little bit about being alone together and about multiplayer solitaire game about picking appropriate games about pondering people about understanding other people's needs about how you like cooperative games, low interaction games, not just multiplayer solitaire, but low interaction games. You said Kalos, which is not the lowest of in lowest interaction, but um, yeah, about rules, about having that understanding other rules, which kind of ties more into anxiety, but about at a convention, having space to go, maybe taking a morning off to walk around Harrogate or... Um, taking the evening off or whatever because maybe you feel drained about being a better listener about wanting to be with folk but not having the energy to do it about game designers about being mindful of your audience who are you designing for as an rpg you know organizer kind of making sure that you interview your people to make sure that all those needs are aligned and ultimately i feel like if we've got any conclusion today it's all about find, making sure that your needs are aligned and about the boundaries and establishing that and about chatting and being okay and not having too much of an ego with everyone. Would do you say, have anything more to say as the summary? No, no, I think you've said it all really. It's, uh, it's a very good summary. Well, thank you very much. Um, and if you want to find me, I am... Stuffbybez.com, stuffbybez.bigcar.com, twitter.com, slash of bez, instagram.com, slash stuff bez. I'm trying to share more pictures of games and yeah, probably there might still be some pictures of cats. Twitch.tv slash of bez. I stream every day at 10 a.m. and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. UK time. YouTube.com slash C slash stuff bez for the old shows and stuffbez.com slash discord. Please join that um, and share your pictures of cats in my discord channel. And because there is a dedicated cat chat. And yeah, so um, do do do. So I'm just finding um, these links. So if you want to find um, Ka, how do people find you? Oh, I'm on the internet. Um, <laughs> um, if you go to www.honeybadgergames.co.uk, that is my website. We have a contact option there. I'm on Twitter um h badger games and i am on facebook honey badger edible oh what are we called uh, honey badger honey, edible games honey badger edible games there you go i could i could have literally read it off the screen <laughs> <laughs> yes or or just drop me a line i think most of my contact details are on my are on my website and i want to say um thank you everyone it has been a lovely discussion and yes, it is lovely to have you, Kath, 
um, to join me. It was, thank you so much for, yeah, I don't know, gracing us with your presence sounds a bit obsequious, and, but it's just been a, it's just been a fun chat and coming, Ooh. sharing that knowledge and having a good chin wag, do you know what I mean? It has been brilliant, actually. And here's my here's my extrovert child requiring my attention. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been really, really good to talk to you again, and I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for inviting me. And you said everyone's got lots of love, and thank you, everyone in the audience. And hello, J Fools Guard, who says other good stuff is about to start. I'm going out in the garden. That sounds lovely. Nice. And um. Before we finish, I hope, are you able to spare us five more minutes, Calf, before? I hope so. <laughs> it might be slightly interrupted, but absolutely. <laughs> okay, so over to you. What are you up to? You can share anything you want to. So feel free to share anything you want. Is it your heart's desire or your um, boring facts about yourself or a hope or an ambition or whatever or something you plan to do? I am going to eat something after this. I have no idea what I'm eating. I'm probably going to go for a bit of a walk because, you know, just have a bit of a walk, maybe an answer. I don't know who with. Maybe I'll kind of, um, yeah. And, yeah, I'm going to try and write a whole bunch of rules today. That is my main objective. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> what are you up to? Anything that you want to share? Um, I mean, it looks a lot like I'm probably going to be doing a jigsaw <laughs> by by the by the look of things. Yes, I think I'm going to be doing a jigsaw after this. I might see if I can have some something to eat at the same time. That would be great. Oh, I have something to eat as well. I'm sure you do. Yeah, <laughs> looks <laughs> like we're both going to be having something to eat. <laughs> and that sounds lovely. And for next streams. Look at stuffbybears.com slash streams. Tomorrow I am from 10 o'clock UK time until 12-ish. Um, I'll be chatting with Chris about a whole bunch of games, most of which we have played together. Um, and I might talk about Empires of the North a wee bit more like my first impressions. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff coming up. Um yeah, go there to check out everything. Feel free to share, spread the word. I am going to check out what <laughs> else is going on quickly. Um, so, again, thank you, everyone. And I believe there is only one thing left to do. Um, unless, oh, yeah, I guess I will say, uh, hope you have a good rest of your day and lots of love and enjoy whatever you are up to everyone for now um if you're on twitch i suggest listening to alusam who's sam something or other they play some great piano music um and for now i am going to say bye 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 this is the goodbye song Bye bye, bye bye, thank you for watching along. Bye bye, bye bye, this is the end of the show. Bye bye, bye bye, now it's time to go. Do -do -do -do. Bye bye, bye bye, this is a goodbye song. Bye bye, bye bye, thank you for watching along. Bye bye, bye bye, this is the end of the show. Bye bye. Bye, bye. And now it's time to go. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.